Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing our Halloween set review. We're doing Innistrad Midnight Hunt this week. Um, going to do Crimson Vow later. And these are the top five budget picks, or sorry, my top five budget picks, not the top. Anyway, I do love the art in this. Oh, please hit like and subscribe. It makes such a big difference. It does. Um, yeah. So the top five budget picks, again, I'm looking at the value on MTG Goldfish. I always use that for these videos because looking at whole sets, it lists them very clearly. Where TCG player and things like that, I want to show you like kind of individual cards or a whole bunch of different values for different things. Um, that's kind of confusing. This is much simpler. Um, definitely if you want to like look at a whole like set, that's the site for it anyway. Sigarda, Champion of Light. So one green, white, white. Selesnia, right? A 4-4 four, four Flying Trample. Humans you control get plus one, plus one. So there's a big thing where angels and humans work together. Uh, I guess because angels are humans with wings or something. But anyway. Whenever she attacks, you uh, if you control three or more creatures with different power, Coven. Um, Look at the top five cards in your library. You may reveal, reveal a human card from them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in a random order. Yeah. So this is just going to keep fetching humans out of the top five for you. And it's uh, just really, really powerful ability. She also has that, you know, plus one, plus one anthem, which isn't bad, but you're in it for the, like, pseudo card draw for sure, right? There's so many decks that can just get so much value out of this. Selesny has a great uh, color combination for this as well. Anyway, 106 only. I actually don't have one of these. I should order one if I don't uh, if I don't actually pull it. Sarah the Viper's Fang. Two green green for a three four. This is a card everyone should have if you're just like building decks. You should have one or two of these just lying around. Um, other tap creatures you control have Death Touch. Other untapped creatures you control have Hexproof. Okay, so just your board is going to normally be like Hexproof, and anytime you want to attack, you're going to tap and they immediately get Death Touch. So if they block, if anyone blocks you, it's Death Touch time. Um, just a really amazing combination of things. I think even if it was just like you tap and get death touch, that would already be worth it on a card. Also, you can pay one and tap her to untap another target uh, creature or land you control. That can be set, used to set up a whole bunch of mean things. Like if you got Cabal Coffers, untap Cabal Coffers, tap it again and just get that huge pile of black mana once again. Anyway, um, 116, just such a good card. Ay. Right of Harmony. I actually always mean to put this in Celestia decks and never quite makes the cut, but it is a very good card. Uh, getting card draw, even for a turn, upon every creature and enchantment entering is powerful, especially in Celestia. Yeah, Celestia is really good with enchantments and making creature tokens. Again, this doesn't say non-token creature, it just says creature. So you could potentially just get like a whole pile of cards for two mana. And then it just, it also has flashbacks. So later, you can pay four, right? Two uh, green white, cast it again and exile it. And then you can just like, when you're properly set up, you're gonna get that huge just stack of uh, card draw. That's double card draw on one card. The flashback is not cheap, but it's gonna be worth it. Cause you're gonna set it off at when you've got your token generator made, when you're like ready to flash enchantments or something and you're just going to get a pile of value out of that. Anyway, 120. Tainted Adversary. This is another one I don't have that I think I should order. Do I? Uh, I can't keep track. Okay, for one and a black is a two, three with death, death touch. Already a good start, right? Two mana for a two, three with death touch is not bad. As a starter, and when it enters the battlefield, you may pay two and a black any number of times. So it basically has a kicker, right? It doesn't call it kicker, but it's basically a kicker. Um, so for every three extra you play, or play, pay, uh, you put a an extra plus one, plus one counter on them, and you make a two, two zombie with decayed. These can't block, and when they uh, attack, they basically automatically die. 
right? They get sacrificed. Is it sacrifice? Yeah, sacrifice at the end of the turn. Yeah, for a second I was like, do I ha remember that wrong? I got something wrong the other day, so I'm paranoid. Anyway, um, which can, again, if you've got all kinds of death triggers, that, is, once again, in an aristocrat strategy, this is where you want to use this. A lot of these were made with aristocrat in mind. Anyway, 140. Enduring Angel. Okay, this is a weird one. Two white, white, white for a 3 3. Flying Double Strike. And you have Hexproof. Oh, wait, no. If your life total will be reduced to zero or less and said transform Enduring Angel, and your life total becomes three, then if it didn't transform this way, you lose the game. I'm confused a bit by the if it didn't transform part. I guess maybe there's some way to stop it from transforming? I don't know. But anyway, so basically, if you're going to lose the game, you can, like, instead be like, no, one more time. Uh, this could be useful. I'm again, it's like a safety net, I think, in general. And then she transforms into a flying. Once again, you have hexproof. Nice combination, like a safety net and hexproof for yourself. Angelic's power, or sorry, angelic enforcer sort of becomes is power and toughness are each equal to your life total. Whenever angelic enforcer attacks, double your life total. So. This is going to be very good at like recovering. Um, I look at this as a card where it could be extremely useful if you want to plan against a particular deck, like against my Sahili deck. Um, I can pretty much like nuke someone down to zero pretty easily just by making creature tokens and then casting a big X spell. So if someone wanted to counter that, they would get this, and it's like okay, you go to zero and you bounce right back up. So I would. Uh, it's again, I guess you couldn't he nuke them because they have hex proof as well. But anyway, it uh, it is useful as like a counter. This is very much a counter card, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, it's niche, but it's there. Anyway, 165, and this has been Innistrad Midnight Hunt. All right, the budget picks. Sorry, budget picks. All right, take it easy. <laughs>